Hello everyone and welcome to some more surgery games. Today we're going to be playing the heart surgery and the appendix surgery and don't worry, today there's going to be 95% less turkeys. What's that? You want a reminder of the horrors that happened last time? Okay, here you go. Ah! Sweet Jesus, the noise is coming out of this thing. Dr. Jeff! Help me, Dr. Jeff. So the good thing about this surgery, guys, is that it's not with Dr. Jeff. So we don't need to listen to Dr. Jeff's bullshit. I don't know what this lady's name is. It's a different uh, company. It's not the surgery squad. It's the operate now. But uh, there's a lady here, and hopefully she's not quite as annoying, okay? Let's just start. Okay, she doesn't even say anything. Great, now I can actually speak myself and not worry about people interrupting me. Hello again, Doc, because apparently I've been here before. Whatever, doesn't matter. It's me, Nurse Lara, and I sure am glad to see you here at St. Flax Hospital again. St. Flax Hospital. Wow, okay. If we team up like we have before, every patient in the hospital will be better in no time. Because obviously, every patient in the hospital is being treated by us, right? Yeah. Warning, don't try this at home. Our patient today is Joe. He was born with a weak heart, which causes him to get tired a lot faster than other kids his age. If not treated, his condition will be life-threatening. Wow, Joe. Stop being such a little bitch, huh? Okay, Doc. Let's get Joe to the operating room. It should be one of these three rooms. Hang on a second. I did, I did an Operate Now surgery before, didn't I? I did the eye surgery on Operate Now. Okay. So we have done this one before. I, I only just realized it now because I see the uh, the different doors and I'm pretty sure I chose the wrong one last time just to see what happened. Okay. It should be one of these three. Joe, heart condition. What room would he have to go into? The arm room, the leg room, or the heart room? <laughs> oh God, I need a lifeline. I'm calling a friend. I'm calling a friend. All right, listen, man. I got a really important question to ask you. Heart surgery, is that gonna be in the arm room? the leg room, or the heart room. He called me an idiot and hung up. Here we go! First we need to sterilize the chest area, pick up the tongs. Okay, this is where it gets interesting, guys. What am I doing? Am I, am I clamping this guy's nipple with the tongs? Is that what you want me to do? Because that's kind of fucked up, doc. Or nurse, or whatever the hell you are. Grab a cotton ball, but I just grabbed tongs. Oh, I pick up the cotton ball with the tongs. And I dip it in some delicious chicken broth. And then I apply it to his, what the hell is going on here? That's, no. His, his skin wasn't black before I did this. Now we'll draw a line on Joe's chest to mark where the incision will be made. You need a marker. Okay. That's right. Draw the line. Where, where, there. No, I just gotta click it. Oh, okay. I, I want to do a little bit more, okay? Can you give me a little bit more um, freedom here? I want to draw lines wherever I want. Or at least, you know, have the option to screw up. I like screw it up sometimes. Time for the first incision, grab the scalpel. I need to hurry, I only got five minutes to do this, holy shit. Okay, scalpel, here we go. Let's cut some shit, boom. Oh, now I get to drag stuff. Okay, perfect incision, doc. The incision has caused some veins to bleed a little. Use the boby to fix that. I thought you said it was the perfect incision, huh? How can it be the perfect incision if it caused stuff to bleed? When I played the eye surgery game, guys, I had people tell me I was shit at the game. I was like, man, I'm just screwing around. I'm not trying super hard to do this surgery. We need a clamp to spread the skin and muscles to reveal the rib cage. Grab it now. Okay, let's grab that clamp, guys. I want to use the bone stapler. That's always fun. Hey, look, I found a heart. Do we break the ribs? Do we have a hammer? I, I applied too much surgeon simulator in my days, man. Now take another clamp and use it to open the incision further. Okay, all right, we're stretching it out. That's cool, that's cool. Here we go. The rib cage blocks our access to Joe's heart. We're going to have to cut through it. The bone scissors should be perfect for that. So they do that, huh? They just they just cut right through the ribs. Don't ribs have like a, a layer of like muscle covering them? I'm pretty sure they do, guys. I mean, if you stick over, if you stick your finger in your ribs. I'm pretty sure you can't just go between them. But okay, we really got to stop screwing around, guys. We don't have a whole lot of time. We only have three minutes left. That's all. If we don't do this in three minutes, the patient dies. This is like the world's fastest fastest surgery ever. Okay. We need to remove any bone fragments with the tongs. Okay, tongs and bone fragments. Uh, place those in the pan, okay, cool. Give those to my dog later. Before we continue, we have to move his nerves out of the way with the string. String, what are you using string for? Okay, all right, just, are we wrapping it around, just pulling it? I like that, okay, good, it's not in the way now. Let's tie back the other nerve, all right, so we need string again, and we do that. And we got two and a half minutes, so we gotta hurry. We're gonna hook Joe up to this heart pumping machine during the transplant match two is based on the color going in alphabetical order. Start with tube A. What? This goes into tube A, and then this goes into tube B. 
This goes into tube C, and this goes into tube D. Don't we have like other people working here who would do that instead? I'm trying to actually do the surgery here. We're removing Joe's heart now. You need to the sharp tipped scissors. Okay, sharp tipped scissors. Just snip it away. Boop. And attach the tube. That's important, guys. If you don't attach the tube, he's just gonna bleed out and die. And we don't want that, right? Right? Grab the sharp tipped scissors again. Okay, here we go. We're gonna cut it again. And I'm assuming we're gonna have to uh, attach the tube. Grab the sharp tipped scissors again. Yeah, oh shit, no. Oh my God, I pressed the wrong one. You shouldn't put two scissors in front of me if I only need one, okay? The bones are gone. Can you take that other piece, of th that other set of scissors away, please? Grab the sharp tipped scissors, which are over here. They keep like, they keep moving it around. Who does that? All right, doc, I've got the right tool here, but I'm just gonna move it over to the other side of your pan so you don't know where it is so we can screw with you. But there goes the heart, and we just go grab a new heart, put it in, perfect fit. Well, I would hope so. We need <laughs> suture thread now. Okay, suture thread, and now we gotta, we gotta sew this up. We don't have much time. Well, it's happening pretty fast. Hot damn. All right, nice, remove the string. And good job, put the bones back in. <laughs> what do you do then? Do you like have to use like cement or something to put the bones in right? Because I mean, it's not just gonna stay in like that. This is probably a surgery, probably takes a while to recover from. Uh, staple, yes, we need to staple the bones together. There you go. Hey, we get paste, we get bone paste. Okay, so we do get some sort of cement along with it. All right, lots of stuff going on here, guys. I am just surprising myself with my ability to predict the future here. Remove the clamps, there you go. There you go. And then suture again, right? Need more suture thread. There. And away we go. You are gonna look great when you're done, Joe. All right. Patient needs a chest cast to keep him from moving too much. Grab the cast bandit. God damn it. Cast bandit. Here you go. Got it. Whew. We gotta hand it to you, Doc. The operation was a big success. I'm sure the patient will make a full recovery. Even better, he'll be able to run and play sports like never before. I have some sad news, guys. Three days after the surgery, little Joe died in a boating accident. I didn't even know he had a boat, man. <laughs> Why, Joe? Why? So now that surgery is done, guys, we're gonna move on to the appendix surgery. Don't ask me why I picked appendix next. I just thought it would be a cool surgery to do, okay? Let's see what we gotta do. Once again, don't try this at home, okay? Always, always go to a friend's house. Meet Tara. Tara was brought to the hospital because of a severe stomach ache. She may have appendicitis, which is a possibly life-threatening condition. You need to examine her, and depending on your diagnosis, we may need to take her to the operating room. Okay, we will first check if the patient is experiencing pain due to inflammation of the appendix or appendicitis, as it is called. We are going to proceed to punch her in the stomach. Apply some pressure to the area where the appendix is located to see if it hurts. Wait, are you gonna even give me a place? I'm gonna, here, 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 here. Whoop, whoop, she definitely seems to be in a lot of pain. This is a possible sign of appendicitis. Let's do a blood test to confirm. All right, I knew the appendix was right down there somewhere around your hip, but I wasn't sure. First, pick up the tourniquet and wrap it around the patient's arm. Good, now tap the forearm a couple of times to make the vein more visible. Give that a smack, man. Gotta love it. Great, the vein is clearly visible. Let's disinfect the area now. First, select the tongs. Okay, let's go with the tongs here. We are going to grab a cotton ball, of course, dip it in some chicken soup, and put it on the arm. There you maybe go. What, what, what's happening? Oh, okay. All right, each time you touch it, it gives you a new little strip. Now that the area is clean, you can pick up the needle and carefully insert it into the patient's arm. Not ready for this, man. I'm gonna screw this up so bad. Oh, we're getting blood, yes, okay. I'm not paying attention, guys. Honestly, I don't pay attention to games when I play them. Remove the vial from the needle. Okay, there you go. That's done. I'm gonna predict something here, guys, okay? I think that this patient is gonna need to get the surgery. I think she has appendicitis. We will now examine the patient's blood for an increase in white blood cells. White blood cells protect the body from harmful outside influences, I know. Okay, I'm not completely stupid here. If there's an increase in white blood cells, it might be an indication that there's a dangerous inflammation in the body. Okay, no more than eight white blood cells should be visible in the microscope. Please check the white blood cell count and tell me if it's normal. It's too high, I already know it's gonna be too high. I agree, doctor, the normally high white blood cell count indicates there is a very high probability she's suffering from appendicitis. Yes, of course. Since there's a high probability that our patient is suffering from an inflamed Appendix, we will surgically remove it today. Let's start the surgery. Please get the scalpel. Okay, here we go. Scalpel. I'm gonna press it right here. And down we go. Open that up. All right. Now pick up the red retractors. They will keep the incision open. All right. So this is uh, not quite as extreme as the last one by the look of it. Looks like spoons. Am I sticking spoons in there? Hmm. All right. Good. Use the scalpel to cut through the fat layer. I can do that. Let's grab this scalpel here. Cut through your fat. Wow, 
Oh, it seems the incision has caused the patient to bleed. Quickly soak up the blood with a piece of cloth so you can cauterize the vein. Okay, there you go. We got uh, six and a half minutes to do this one, guys. So, you know, we got lots of time. Nothing to worry about. We're just going to get it done. The patient's going to go home and totally be fine. Now, quickly pick up the cauterizer and use it to close the bleeding vein. All right, here we go. Just poke it. That's it. Little tiny vein. Great, the bleeding has stopped. Grab the scalpel so we can continue this surgery. Are we cutting more stuff? Seriously, how many things are we cutting here today? Oh, it's just a small poke there. Great, pick up the scissors and use them to enlarge the opening. Really? Okay. Just a stick pair of scissors. Oh, we're just snipping it. Huh. I don't know why we didn't just do more scalpel work, but okay. Good, remove the retractors. Are we done? <laughs> I don't know why they'd be removed, but apparently now that uh, we've pulled it open a little bit, they're just going to stay open. Place them in the center hole and pull it open. The tissue may tear a little, but that's okay. Rip that tissue up, man. I don't give a shit. Not my body. There. All right. The tissue tore a lot. We will now use the scissors to wedge the muscles out of the way. Please pick up the scissors. There you go. Just going to stick that. Whoa. Okay. I don't know what's happening anymore, guys. But we're turning it 90 degrees. And up you go. You need to be extra careful when cutting the next layer. Directly under it lies the intestines. If not carefully cut, you can puncture the patient's bowels. And then shit happens. We need to lift the peritoneum up a bit. So we're going to grab the tweezers here and just poke it in. All right. I don't know what that, I don't know what just happened then, but I don't really care. Grab another pair of tweezers, doc. Sure. Sure. Lots of tweezers here. That's good. That's good. Glad you got the medical equipment you need. Great. Take the scissors out and make a small cut. Okay. See, that doesn't look like it's supposed to. I think it's supposed to look like it's pulled up a bit, but it doesn't look like that at all. Okay. So just got to snip that now. Okay. I like how they just jam it in there. I thought maybe do a little bit of a snip snip, but nope. Just tear the cut open with your fingers. Oh, now we're getting down and dirty with this thing. All right. <laughs> I think we're almost there. Okay, I see some stuff. Excellent work, doctor. We can now pull the appendix out. All right. We are now going to pull the appendix out of the patient's body so we can treat it. It seems that the appendix is sticking to the intestines. Grab the appendix with your fingers. Oh, baby. Ooh, damn. Just gonna, yep, move that out of the way. Just like that. <laughs> Spin it around. Great work, doctor. Now grab the intestines and pull it out. Wait, what? Grab the intestine? I thought we were trying to get some appendix stuff going on here, but yep, there you go. That's, that's great. <laughs> great work, doctor. <laughs> we were right to operate. The patient's appendix is infected and needs to be removed. Grab the tweezers, doctor. Here you go again. And we're just gonna, yeah, okay. So that's the appendix. It's a little tiny thing hanging onto your intestines. All right, here we go. This is the moment of truth. This is where the fun happens. Snip and close the wound. Wait, what? We're not done. What did we just do? Uh, pick up the needle. All right. I guess we're like closing it as we go because we're not fully done yet. We actually put like individual stitches in this time too. Last time it was just put the molly in at the same time. Nice work, doctor. Now move the tweezers and clamp them on the other side of the appendix, then cut the remaining tissue with the scalpel. I get it. I understand what's happening here. That's cool. That's cool. Here you go. Snip it off. Great. The appendix has been removed. Suture the wound with a needle so we can put it back in the patient's body. That's probably a good idea. You are really on the ball today, nurse. Thanks a lot. So now we just gotta make sure everything goes back inside the body. Guys, you don't wanna leave anything out. I've heard a lot of horrible, horrible medical stories where things do not get either put back in the body or they uh, get left in the body, like gauze and utensils and shit. How do you leave utensils in someone's body? Why would you even put it in there in the first place? Like, you know what? You know what's a good place to leave these scissors? Right over here next to the kidneys. I'll get them after. Oops, forgot. The patient is probably gonna die now. Very good, doctor. Let's remove the retractors and pick up the needle to close the wound. We got to do that because we only got a minute and a half, and I don't want this patient to die. Okay, that's just another lawsuit on my hands, and I've had way too many already. Pick up the needle, doctor. There you go. It's just uh, a bunch of these, and then we should be done, I suppose. We can send little whatever the hell her name is on our way. Now, put a patch on it, and we're done. So you're telling me if I don't put this patch on it now, in a minute, the patient will die. Hmm, that's an important patch right there. Got it. Done. Zero mistakes. Thanks, Doc. You're welcome. I just saved your life. All right, guys. Well, that was the heart and appendix surgery. If you have any surgeries you'd like me to play, let me know down below in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.